Now. Let, let, me, let me pull up that. the story from uh, TimCast.com. This is, you may have heard the news. Governor Abbott bars mm-hmm. vaccine mandates in Texas. The state's legislature previously banned local governments and school districts from requiring vaccines or masks. This is big. It's that simple. Now, Joe Biden's executive order for uh, 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 the OSHA rule, 100 employees or more, it's not, it doesn't exist. It was just a press conference. It's not there. There's no executive order on the books, and OSHA has not implemented this rule. However, Abbott is saying in Texas, you cannot, you cannot have vaccine mandates. Southwest is based in Dallas. So what are they going to do? Are they going to, uh-huh. you know, so what are, are they going to now, if, if they do this, they're going to get fined, I guess, per, per employer or however it worked a thousand bucks. But think about this. What happens if OSHA does drop this rule? Let's say you're a business in Texas and you're told by the governor, if you mandate vaccines for your employees or customers, we will fine you a thousand bucks per infraction. But then you get the Fed saying, if you don't, we will fine you way more per infraction. So do you think this is why the Southwest CEO mm-hmm. is saying what he's saying about not liking vaccine mandates or mask mandates or whatever? He's got, he can't do anything about it. I mean, you got, it, 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 this, hold, let me, I just got to slow down. Pick a side. Mm-hmm. Cause that, that's where we're at. Pick a side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what bothers me. This is an example of fighting authoritarianism with authoritarianism. What, what yep. Abbott did, I think is a step too far. He, he basically mandated that no one can authorize vaccines. He's telling the no, private no, no, companies. Mandate it. He's saying, so So the federal government said everyone has to do it. Then Abbott said in and came in and said, no one's allowed to do it. And you know yeah. why? What he There's done, already a law in the book saying you can't discriminate for medical reasons. So what he should so, have said is, you don't have to listen to the federal government. You can do whatever you want. No. The, the, the mandate specifically says that individuals are allowed exemptions for religious, personal conscience, or, or medical reasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is what's effectively shutting down the vaccine mandates, that people can just choose not to get them due to personal conscience. There's already laws in the books saying you can't discriminate for medical but, or religious reasons. As far as I can tell, and correct me if I'm wrong, Abbott's telling every private company in Texas that they're not allowed to mandate vaccines now. Should, should they be allowed to uh, uh, ban people if they're black? I don't know. I don't think so. Why? Or if they're in Civil a wheelchair. Civil rights law? Yeah. Or if they're in a wheelchair. Should, should, should they be allowed to, to ban wheelchairs? Or people with oh. like AIDS or cancer? Well, it depends on the job. You know, certain things require certain amounts of activities. So like if you need someone to climb ladders, you can't hire someone in wheelchairs. But that's, that's a form of discrimination. Mm-hmm. So if you need somebody to uh, work in a grocery store and there are jobs that can be done in a grocery store that someone in a wheelchair can do, should they be allowed to say no wheelchairs allowed? What about what about a Muslim person? Should they be able to be like, no, 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 get that Muslim stuff out of here? Should they be allowed? They, they, they should. I think that violates civil, civil rights. Civil rights. Right. Yes, and there's also the the Amer- uh, the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act. So now you've got a med- medical reasons, and we shouldn't have to present our papers to our doc to 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 the store to prove should should a person who's got some kind of like uh, uh not you know should someone have to go and prove that they're the, the right race? And they say, oh, you know, I'm not firing you because of your race because you I don't even know if that's your real race. Should they have to go then go pull up lineage? No, you don't got to prove it. We just make the case when we complain. The point is, I, I, I agree to, an excer- to a certain extent, Abbott should, we shouldn't have rule by decree. However, these are different situations. If the law already states you can't discriminate for religious reasons and medical reasons, and it does, case closed. Yeah. If someone says it is against my deeply held moral and, and spiritual and religious or whatever beliefs, they should be able yeah, to do Yeah, but you don't have it. to hire someone with leprosy if they come in there. That's different. What's different about it? I mean, come on, bro. I mean, it's different to me and you because we pay attention. But, you know, in the mind of a business owner, who's who's the governor to say who they can and can't? That's a different question, because in one case, you're asking about somebody who already has a disease. In the second case, you're asking about not whether someone has a disease, but whether or not they've been vaccinated, not whether or not they're sick. Mm -hmm. So in the case of the leprosy thing, you'd say, well, you already have it. You can give it to somebody. Whereas in the case of the vaccine thing, do you have COVID? No, I don't have COVID. Eh, Too bad. Why? Because you're not vaccinated. Right. That's this. That's the. Uh, that's the separation point. What I would ask is whether or not, for all the people who are pushing the COVID thing, could a bar owner say, nobody with STDs is allowed to come yeah. to ladies' night? We want, we want couples to get together. We're and you got to bring your papers. Health. That's right. Bring and a negative so you test. Have to sh- you have to disclose to us your HIV status. Would mm. people be comfortable with that? Of course they wouldn't. Or, or would people be comfortable saying, look, you have to have your vaccine for hep C before you can come in. Would people be comfortable with that? For me, the question is, how far can these things get pushed? Yeah. And I understand 
vax passports i understand why people want them but the the question that no one has been able to ask to answer for me is where is the hard and fast line that yeah. it stops no one's been able to give me an answer to that and that's why i'm so skeptical yeah. of them. let's add another element here let's talk about this you know vaccine that stops stds the vaccine that stops this hypothetical that we're talking about doesn't stop STDs. It doesn't prevent the spread of STDs. It doesn't stop people from having STDs as well. On top of all of this, which people need to understand the greater point here. So, so you know, there's so many different ways that people could take this. There's if, if we're starting to discriminate against people because of their medical personal choices and decisions, you know, let's first discuss that. And even on those merits, whether the, you know, the effectiveness of the vaccine, the transmission of the vaccine, uh, natural immunity, I think that conversation needs to happen in this first place. The second thing is no one should be telling me what to do. A government shouldn't be controlling every aspect of my existence because, because if they could do this with the vaccine, they could do this with almost every other aspect of our existence. And so, Ab Abbott's basically telling business owners what to do. He's saying you cannot. He signed an executive order saying that vaccine mandates are not allowed by any entity right so, so it's a form of authoritarianism now maybe he did the right thing i I'm just disagree saying. because he's standing up for people's civil rights he's standing up for people's personal decisions he, he's standing up to the current kind of hippo laws that are out there that says that people can't but, be discriminated against and have to that, divulge that, their medical that, history that anytime already uh, evident he doesn't need to mandate uh, civil rights to people he just needs to protect them from does, the federal government's overreach that's, that's South, doing, southwest yeah. is literally violating social norms and law by, then they can by, go work at a different a Texas. I mean, this is the. I think so, when so it starts Ian, to break down is when it's a when it's a national company with with a satellite in Texas. This is this is this is, this is, this is really interesting because we did have this conversation before. It may have been with Michael Malice. the The argument you're making is the argument that was made by by conservatives and um, maybe maybe conservatives isn't the right word, but it was made by the the Democrats to stop civil rights. Mm -hmm. They said the government should not have the authority to mandate a private business. You know, uh, not discriminate. They, they can serve whoever they want. If someone doesn't want to work there or someone doesn't go, they don't have to go there. That was always the argument. Then you had the the social, uh, you know, the people fighting for civil rights, specifically saying public accommodations are shared by all. If we're all paying taxes into it, then we should all be able to utilize these services. My view of it is if there is limited space in the commons and there is a building occupying space in that commons, and my tax dollars go towards infrastructure, plumbing, fire department, EMS, and all that, they should not be allowed to discriminate against me or anybody else uh, on specific grounds that, of course, we need to sort through an outline. Now, we have outlines, many of them, religious reasons. You can't put up a sign saying no Muslims allowed. Hmm. You can't mandate that people eat bacon to enter your store. Because that would very serious. Uh, someone walk in. I mean, maybe you can, but then if someone who was Muslim walked up and they said, "Do it," you'd be like, "You can't do that. That's discrimination on the basis of my religion," and you'd probably get in trouble. There's a guy who went to jail for throwing bacon at a, at, at a mosque. So, so right now, Abbott is basically saying these these mandates just violate so many of our non-discrimination laws. You can't do this. Public accommodation is for all. If we are paying taxes into it. We are a community to maintain social cohesion. You cannot restrict access to someone on the basis of their medical reasons or religious reasons or personal moral conscious reasons. Now, it's tough. It is because personal moral conscience is, is, is a broad term. But he said that in his executive order because it's basically about religion. There's a lot of people who are saying, oh, but the Pope said they can get the vaccine, even though it's you. They, they use fetal cells to make it in the testing process. And it's other vaccines. They literally use it and they use it in testing for a bunch of other medicines. The Pope says it's fine. Well, I don't care what the Pope thinks. And I'm sure, I'm sure there's a whole lot of other Catholics who don't care that the Pope has said that. They're like, no, that, that, that goes against our religious values. So if we already have the laws on the books, then him simply saying, hey, guys, I am reinforcing that you cannot discriminate. So I guess we're all in agreement that sometimes authoritarianism is necessary and good. No. No, well, that's what just, Abbott no, just they, did. No, we're no, not, again, hold, we're not hold, on there. Hold, hold on there a minute. You mean decades of civil rights work to get laws put on the books through legislation and elected representatives who then voted on it is authoritarianism? No, I'm saying him making a decree like this is authoritarianism. Making a decree to reinstate, to, to, to reaffirm what yeah. is already just like, just like law. desegregating schools. That was authoritarianism. You can see how it works sometimes. Desegregating schools was the part of a long process that was re resulted in a republic having a vote on an issue. So authoritarianism was when everyone just falls in line and adheres to the authority, like the woke cult. When people have strong objections and, 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 and disagreements, and then we say, hey, we all have finally agreed this is the line. You have to, you can't discriminate. And it was through a democratic elect, representative process. 
Sure, you can argue that people are, oh, no, they have to adhere to the authority of the state because we all agreed to it. But there's a big difference between we fought long and hard. We won over hearts and minds. We got our elected representatives put in office. They voted for it. Then the Supreme Court upheld it. And now we're at a point where the governor is saying, guys, the, the law is clear. You can't do this. I am not going to allow you to because as the head of the executive branch of my state, I am here to enforce the laws that already exist. That's not authoritarianism. Joe Biden issuing an edict where he convinces people there's a law in the books when there isn't, and they all start following him. That's authoritarianism. It's mm. both. It's just two go two governors making declarations about what to do, mm. telling people what they can and can't is, do. Wait, wait. Is your <sighs> objection that is your objection that it was made by the governor and not by the state legislature? Definitely. Okay. Firstly, and secondly, I don't like the government telling private companies what they can and can't do. I'm very nervous and reticent about that kind of thing. So I noticed it when it happened. I, I don't think this is authoritarianism, Ian. I think this is simply him reinforcing the fact that we have civil rights and that no one should have the right to require someone to get a medical procedure if they don't want it. This has always been the case. This is just him reminding everyone that this is the case and not he's not even necessarily putting well, anything new into effect. Well, Am look, I wrong? Look, let me ask another question. If, uh, if a bunch of businesses in Texas started banning black people and then he issued an executive order saying the banning of black people is prohibited, would you call that authoritarianism? Yeah, but it's, there's already a law in the book through a democratic process. Well, him saying something that already skin color is different than disease. Um, you know, you can suspend habeas corpus in times of great disease. I mean, you maybe can is obviously you can, but or you I I don't think it's not about disease. It's about vaccination. Mm -hmm. If this was about if there's nothing in there that prevents a co uh, a company from saying we'd like you to take an, a rapid antigen COVID test before you enter our business right. or present a rapid antigen COVID test. We don't want anyone with COVID, but that's not what that's about. This is about vaccination, not disease. And I think there's a dividing line there. If a business wants to say, look, we're only going to have people come in who have tested negative for COVID, I would say, all right, well, if you want to make everyone take an antigen test before they come in or present an antigen test, I guess if you want to do that. That's fine. Yeah. But there's a difference between saying you have to give us an, uh, an antigen test so that we know whether you have COVID or not. We're keeping the COVID out, not you, on the one hand, or on the other hand, say only if you're vaccinated. Because then, I mean, think of the, the absurdity that comes in. The guy who says, I've tested negative for COVID. I don't have COVID. I can't go in. And another guy says, I tested positive for COVID, but I'm vaxxed. See right. you all there. Yeah. And many There's, people who do take the vaccine do test positive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, someone with a breakthrough case can go in with COVID and a cough all over everywhere because they're vaccinated. And someone who's not who's not sick, doesn't have COVID and has tested negative, can't go in because he's not vaccinated. Right. This is not about disease. It's about using the withdrawal of the ability to use services as a cudgel to beat people who aren't getting vaccinated. And, and that's, I think, a difference. And I, I want to break this down. What we're seeing at the federal level with Biden and the Democrats versus Texas with Joe Biden, on multiple occasions now, he said, the legislature, legislature be damned. Mm -hmm. I will exact executive decree on the eviction moratorium. And now with the, with the OSHA rule, those things need to go through the Congress. We also have the Supreme Court saying no to him with the, with the eviction moratorium and him being like, don't care, I'll do it anyway. And he did. And then Democrats cheered for it. Abbott is saying, guys, there are laws in the book saying you can't do this, and I am obligated to enforce those. I am telling you right now, this cannot be done as per existing law. Yeah. Florida it's is a also big doing a similar difference. thing. Yeah. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash TimCast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you want exclusive members only content segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.